Puja. This is Mount Shasta. It's 14,000 and some feet. It's a volcano, although allegedly dormant. And we're out there doing these contact protocols, and suddenly, I'm, I'm pointing, I didn't want to hit it with my laser, this object appears. Um, again, they sometimes make a comma motion that it's in the field. So I to tell people at that point, they've arrived, the detectors begin to interact, and then they'll dematerialize, but we'll go into the dimensions of consciousness and see, see who they are and contact them. This is an interesting object because it came over, is not a falling star, and look what happens at the very end of it. We blow it up. This is not a falling star. Reminiscent of the object that came in at the beach that went wrapped around the Peruvian doctor. Unfortunately, we were, it, it got ice and kindness came in. This is not a moon. Look at this, how beautiful. But the lens, of the, it was about 22 degrees, 24 degrees, uh, and the lens camera uh, froze over with uh, ice. People go, gosh, you go out in that weather? I said, yeah, this was in the summer, <laughs> but you're up at uh, seven, 8,000 feet. Yep. Look at all these objects. This is a beautiful object. This is reminiscent of the crop circle, the cubic forms of the crop circles that same year. And an object comes in, just like that one, the one you saw earlier, and it makes this beautiful geometric shape that's kind of a woven, woven cube at the base of it. This is not a falling star, I assure you. Here's another one of these objects that comes in right in front of the trees, a few feet from us, lights up. And when you see that, you go, they're here. Now the people say, well, why don't they just fully materialize and come out and walk around? Well, it's very dangerous for them to do that. And if they've come this far through transdimensional space, time, and from other galaxies, they expect us to be awake enough to go into consciousness and then commune and, and communicate with them uh, when they're dematerialized right in the field. They do these events just to let us know that they're very close. Now this is amazing because people who live at Mount Shasta many years and will, will live there for years and never see it. Every time we go, this happens. So these objects are emerging up at about 13,000 feet or close to 14. And this is not, a, this is a star. This is out, uh, coming out of the mountain. And it is a light ship coming out of this the crystalline deep formations within uh, Mount Shasta, very transdimensional. Uh, the one that lifted up and flew off to the left I showed you earlier uh, was actually in the field with us. This one is actually emerging out of the mountain. We have a, f a photograph, I'm hoping it'll be in this series where there's about a dozen of them. Look at the, this is a glacier, uh, very steep, vertical. Yeah, it, it is almost as if a, a, one of the brightest stars in the sky emerges on the Look side of the mountain yeah. and comes out and begins to communicate with us in consciousness. There's an, uh, I, had, I have some night vision scopes that are much better than the ones we're filming with, and you can actually see the terrain and the vertical area, and it's coming straight out. Look at how bright it is. Isn't that beautiful? You guys should go take your groups up to Mount Shasta. It's up at the, near the Oregon border in California. I've done many expeditions there. The problem is um, we, we, it's hard for us to find a place to do our contact work there that will hold all of us. This one's going on, 
And then this comes in right in the fence. Look, boom. Very close to us. So they're here, here, and then they're in our consciousness. Watch this, there it goes. Now these light craft and beings that appear very quickly, it's reminiscent of when I interviewed the police and the military in, in Belgium during when they had all those large triangular craft being seen. And the part of the report that got left out is that they would dematerialize and form just a, a sphere like this and then shoot off into space and go straight out into space. So this is also very late after there are, there, there are no satellites and it, it's interacting with us again. And you can hear the detector just went off. Bloop, bloop. We're up at a site at about uh, seven or 8,000 feet when this happened. Very clear air, gorgeous, but cold. You need six layers of clothing, and this is in September, early September, I believe. Beautiful. And then it, you can see, it doesn't move, it just disappears. This got pixelated. Uh, they were trying to zoom in. It's beyond the camera. This, this was a, is a night scope, monocular, third generation hooked to a digital camera. Another object right outside the circle. Sometimes there'll be a scatter of these. And when they scatter, uh, it's an area where it, the, the area is being activated, as it were. It's beautiful. This is Mount Shasta's in the fog. And it's going straight up. Yeah, this, uh, uh, Mount Shasta is almost like one of the chakras of Mother Earth. Beautiful. It was going up, came up from the volcano going up. There was just a uh, arrival of a, a golden uh, object in the north field here. I mean, the gold. I'm talking about a golden object arrived in the north field, and then the camera captures this, yeah, right here. So with these nice scopes, you can't see color, but uh, Many of these objects, they range for every color of the rainbow. These look like discrete lightning bolts in a small area. These happen very frequently coming into this dimension. We need to, um, of course, I, the, the, we can't, I don't know if we can skip forward to the next series. Uh, it's actually a video and it's not a chapter thing. So it's All right. Video. All right.
This is a planet. This is not. So one of the things that, that most people don't realize when you begin to practice the CE5 protocols is that you have to have all your senses on. This is just visual. There are tonal, there are sounds that are coming in, may or may not get recorded, and there are also even smells. You can actually, sometimes you'll smell like carnations or roses or... What time, please? Very, very bright, emerging. Bless you. Then towards the end of the night, what I always ask people to do is to connect to everything that we've seen and the intelligences within them, the people within them, and invite them to come into your dream time. And since there's really no barrier to space and time, right now you can go back in time to this event connect to those beings and ask them to come in to dream time with you tonight here. You understand? That this is, these are just ways to awaken the mind and remind you they're never very far away at all. And when you begin to realize that interstellar civilizations are not required to appear the way Hollywood would like for you to imagine them. Then, and you begin to understand all the different ways they can manifest like this. You can go out and with a completely open mind experience their, their presence. There has never been an expedition in the 25 years I've been doing this where something new that I've never seen or experienced hasn't happened. So I don't know if you can fast forward. Is there a fast forward function on that? In the interest of time. Yeah. The reason we're having, oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We're on another, uh, on the west coast of Florida, near Mar on Mount Marco Island, and we're on a state beach. And all of a sudden, these very strange objects start appearing everywhere. You can probably just fast forward on this because it's really very interesting to see. There it is. Look. Right there. It turns out on this one particular night, there were 300 of these objects seen. and they're actually lighting up the mangroves. We're looking towards the Gulf of Mexico. This is a lagoon that you have to walk through during the day if you want to go out to the ocean, and we're on a sandy beach. Now, this is beautiful. What is this? We take a photograph. There's, it's a little out of focus. We're just starting our meditation and a brilliant object flashes. But what the camera captures is this. This is the ocean. The edge of the ocean is out beyond these mangroves. This is sky. These are stars. And this, it goes all the way twice as far as this. And it's almost like a, a, a rupture in space-time with all these objects that appear over the ocean, very near us. And everyone is in meditation, you can see. So you can fast forward this to the next. Yeah, you can just fast forward through these. Oh, go back. Oh, well. That's all right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Look at this one moving.
really bright one. So you can fast forward it some more. I mean, it, it, you get the idea of the kind of phenomenon. This is a collection that... Oh, we can go back to this crestone beginning of the crestone one. There we go. Now, we're, at, again, is very strange. The Tibetan prayer bowl is uh, the arrows in the wrong place. And objects begin to show up around us. And we're in, in this sandy area on my land in Colorado. And this is one of the stranger things that have happened. We're in a circle. These are the same, this is a still f camera, very high resolution. And this looks like a blue bean appears between two people. And you'll see this again at Mount Shasta in a moment. This is one of my favorite. This is coming straight up. People, the native peoples reported this for centuries. This is an object, here's our circle. This object comes up and stops right here, right in front of us, a light ship. Uh, the local ranchers will see these objects coming up from the earth, and they call them cheap fireworks. And they're actually a deep underground in the earth ET uh, spacecraft that come in and then launch up. Uh, this is me right here. And out here on this part of the Baca, the desert, there's this reddish object that appears right at dusk. Right at dusk. And this is beautiful. We're breaking up. This is where we put Sherry's ashes on my land. And there's this gorgeous burst of energy and light right beside it. We went out earlier to set up before the group, and I started sensing there was a golden ship, and I pointed over in the meadow, just like that picture in England, and this is sitting right on the land, right on the edge of the stream here. There's nothing over there. There are no houses, no cars, no roads. And it's just coming up from the ground, luminous. It's a ship sitting in the field. Oh, it seems so frozen. Maybe the end of this TV. I don't know. I the end. The end. Okay, so let's. Um, do we want to stand and stretch? What time is it? Yes. Oh, okay. So why don't before we put the next ones in, why don't we take a stretch and about a twenty-minute break? Is that good? And we'll come back. Are you guys enjoying this? Yeah. Okay. We'll have we have more. So we'll do continue. So you can put the lights up, and we'll see you in about twenty minutes. We just have about uh, maybe uh, 30 more minutes of images, if you can bear them. Do you want to see more? All right. And then we're going to do question and answers, and then it'll be a wrap for tonight. So uh, I don't know if everyone's in yet. So folks, uh, people who are on the staff, if you can go out and gather folks around and ask them to come in quietly. We're going to go ahead and get rolling. Uh, webinar folks ready? Yeah. So this is a continuation uh, uh, of some images. We may fast forward through a few for in the interest of time. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go.
Don't you hate computers? They're so slow and stupid. Yeah. I like I, the reason we're having a problem. We usually use DVDs uh, because computers really are very poor quality for this. Uh, and but the hotel didn't provide a remote, <laughs> so there was no yeah for the DVD player. So I didn't discover that until we were about ready to start, and no one knew that they didn't provide one. Uh, and I do apologize. There's a little bit of technical problems here. This again, or not too long ago, 2011, an object that comes. You can see the mountains. It's not something in the sky. It's very close to us again at our contact site. Now, the dark object is because the camera got kicked over, and that's dust. <laughs> Don't be, <laughs> it's nothing interesting. But the, ob the this, this luminous object is. This is pretty interesting because it's a tr three objects in front of the mountain. Another, it's a, it's a theme that keeps recurring. This was fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, the night vision camera didn't capture it. No satellites up. This object with the night scopes I have that are uh, much better than these that are connected to the camera, you could see a perfect C-SETI triangle floating across. So it was three spheres connected by bars floating across the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. Interestingly, after this, and, and not too long ago, in the Midwest, one of our teams had a night scope that captured a C-SETI triangle that flew right over and turned. You're going to see that in a moment, which, which, which actually see the shape of it. This, unfortunately, it was so bright that this particular resolution on this camera and night scope uh, did not permit the, 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 the discernment of the actual structure. That this was in the atmosphere, not too far away and fully materialized. And you can go to the next one. I guess you can't fast forward or go to the next. This is magnificent. Look at the size of this object right above the mountain. Look at the size of this. So this, this is what you think it is. Look at the shape and the size. It, it is a craft that's actually hovering there that unveils itself, comes into this dimension, and then recedes. Does that make sense? So you need to look for these when you're out. So let's go to the next. This is an object right in the tree where Sherry's remains, the ashes are. Look how close, it's maybe 20 feet from us.
Oh, this, you can skip over this. This was on the other disc. You can move through these. As that object again, it's magnificent, but you just saw it. Yep. Now, this is interesting because this is, again, another year at Shasta. We're across the valley from the town of Mount Shasta up on the, the other side. And suddenly, all these objects start appearing, coming out. This happened for several hours. And then there are still photographs you'll see of these beings that are around us by this huge log house that we were using. Um, I don't know if it's in this series. At one point, there was a gigantic Arcturan-type being, a mesomorphic, that was about 12 feet tall, that was just outside the group partially in this dimension. This is very jerky. This is why you can't really use computers. Computers are very poor uh, video, as you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's glitching. But the, there's a whole group. Look at all the ice and snow this year. Time, this year. And these objects are coming out. Yeah, that's where you want to be looking. There it is. No, that was that, I'm sorry. There, there's a road down here. That what you want to be, and someone walks right in front of the camera. <laughs> There, yeah, here they're coming. I don't, this is pix pixelating and breaking up digitally. I apologize. Um, I don't, there's no, probably nothing we can do about it. Someone else walks in front of the camera. <laughs> Memo to participants do not walk in front of the camera when a contact event is. Here's one way up here in the snow field. See this one? So they begin to emerge all over the mountain. Eventually, there are about a dozen of them. Oh yeah, here, here it's back, it's back. There's a, there's a here they are, a two here, one here, and then there was the one up here. Oh, and soon you'll God. see it. Unfortunately, this is jerking along. Oh, the actual back. video is really excellent, but um, the computer is chewing it up. Is there a particular it's reason why it's incredibly steep? Oh, there's one way up higher. Oh, no, yeah. Up here. Yes. They, 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 often they're in volcanic areas because in those... Mountains are very, very large crystalline caverns where they can uh, reside. Uh, and also, they're monitoring geophysical activity in the event of instability. So, you look way up yeah, high. Did you right. see how bright this one was? There's more. It keeps and they get brighter and bigger and brighter. It goes on and on and on. Oh, how bright. Look Whoa. at that. Yeah, some of them are huge. Did you see it? So th these are, you, some people have lived in this area their whole lives and never seen it. We've never gone to Mount Shasta where these beings and these craft haven't emerged out of the mountain. And it all has to do with the consciousness of the, of the group. Look at that one. It's like a giant star coming, emerging out of the mountain. Yeah, it really, this is way far away. This is a 14,000 foot mountain. So the size of this object is substantial. This is a huge mountain. It's not a spe speck of light. So these are light ships that are emerging out of the mountain. Really bright, and there's one straight above. Now, and you've seen the ones that flew up and flew out in the space. Okay. These are ones that are just coming in and out, materializing, dematerializing in and out of the mountain. And this happens in... Uh, are all over the earth, actually, underwater as well. Someone at the break was asking me. Uh, hopefully still images will be better. Look at this. It looks like a, an, uh, it's a bean, and almost like a, uh, this is, this is a, and it's, yeah, it's between two people, just coming, almost like a jacket, but it's, it's barely in this dimension. It comes in and out of this dimension. This is with no flash bulb. This is there, luminous. You know, it's partially. This is an infrared shot in the middle of the day, 
and this object comes in. We have the camera set up, and it picks this object up that's a sphere. It comes up where I'm meditating in the morning because we get up around 11 or 12 before noon because we're up till 4 in the morning. And here's this object. Then this, uh, uh, the following night, an object comes and appears right in front of the tree and is materialized right in front, visible to the naked eye. This is a, a plane. Dink, 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 dink. Now this is beautiful. The, uh, there are all these beautiful lavender objects come up the, uh, over my heart chakra. This is a gas tank. Uh, the, <laughs> but, this, and, and, but this is not my laser. My laser's in the pocket. This thing that looks like a laser is coming from space and comes down. And look at this. I can pause this for a moment. This is, what happened with this is worth describing. It looks like an abstract art. This is an actual photograph of what we were seeing with the naked eye. So after that contact event happened and there was an ET that was in the middle of the circle, we heard footsteps outside the circle in the direction of this. And I went out and I had my hands out, palms facing out, and with my third eye, my heart, and my two palms made a, tra a tetrahedral shape connecting to those beings. And suddenly, the entire area was suffused in millions and millions and millions of multicolored, beautiful lights. It was like swimming in an ocean of celestial light. And it was all around us. It was, it, people were weeping. It was so celestial. It was definitely extraterrestrial, but at the level of celestial energy. And it came into this dimension. And just from the point of view of art, this is so beautiful. Unfortunately, the computer has kind of ruined this, but it, it's actually much clearer when you see the actual photograph. So what can happen is that they can create an environment where they come in and you then find yourself walking in an ocean of scintillating light and their essences are all around you. And what I felt was that every single one of these emanations was a representation of a different species from a different star system. And it's as if you were walking through stars that were conscious, and the, it was like an ambassador flotilla of points of conscious light at the, almost a causal astral interface that came into the dimension of Earth. It was so stunningly beautiful. Okay, next. Oh, dear. Maybe that's the end of it. Okay, so this, now this next little DVD, unfortunately, I haven't seen, and, and it was FedEx and it came in last yesterday. So uh, from a team member who was assembling some, and so we'll be guinea pigs together, all right? I haven't seen it, hopefully there's nothing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, it should have some very interesting Here we go. Mo many of you have seen this, about a five minute event. This is what the uh, debunkers on YouTube have said is a uh, flare. So it's dark, dark at night, it's in the winter at nine o'clock, the sun sets at five. And what happens is really astonishing because first there's this one massive golden ship and then another one, and they're there, and there is a very stiff third 20, 30 knot wind coming out of the north, and they are stationary, definitely are not flares. But that's what they're explaining, just like the Phoenix lights also were. Now this, here you have another person who should be down. Uh, and this is one of them, and in a moment you'll see another. The experience of this was really beautiful because it looked like the sun coming up at nine o'clock at night. And it wasn't something that, that came up actually, it was just appeared and was stationary. And you can see the cloud being lit up and the winds coming very, very, very strongly from this direction. So someone said, oh well, it's a special flare on a parachute. 
Another person said, well, it's just a regular flare, but so look at this one. And um, it's what you think it is. And, but this went on for about five minutes and they were very bright, beautiful. This is a, a camera, the Sony AS7, that you can adjust it so at night you're filming in full color like night scope. Pretty, pretty amazing technology. So Daniel, who's on our team in Toronto, uh, was the, the camera guy for this. And it was quite cold that night. We were up by the dunes and not further out by the ocean because the wind was brutal and it was in the 30s, I think. This is Florida in the winter, and, uh, but quite cold. Now, if you were to put up a flare in a 20, 30 knot wind, I, believe me when I tell you, first of all, you see a smoke trail. Even if it was an electronic flare on a little parachute, which is what one debunker said, it would be moving at, at, at the speed of the wind, obviously. And if the at the ground, if it's 20 or 30 knots, when you get up higher, it's going to be much uh, more wind. As you know, as you go up, you're, you catch more of the winds because you don't have any break, a wind break from the land and structures on the land. But we were connecting with these two, and it's almost like two eyes. You feel like you're look, having a, two, a being to, with two eyes, and they're sort of recapitulating us staring at them, and I felt they were looking back at us and connecting. I was asking people to go into this deep state of consciousness and connect with them. Have, you, have most people seen this before? Yeah. yeah. But I wanted to. <laughs> yes, well, people get excited and, you know, they want to stand up and it, it, it's understandable, but it's... Uh, people are trying to... And they go there and then eventually they just go away. They just vanish. First this one and then, and then this one. So we had a guy who, who was actually, uh, uh, has, uh, it was a Navy guy, and he said, this is no flare. Uh, but other people said, well, the military was just playing tricks on you. And of course, you can always claim that. Basically, if you're, if you're there and you're, you're f f feeling it and seeing it, and, and when you see it with the naked eye, it's even more affecting than when you see it through a camera. And then they, they go away. Goodbye. It's beautiful. These are some clouds here. And that's a star. That's my laser pointing out where they were. I don't know why he didn't edit. Editing's really important because here we go. The, Oh, this is the same object. This is a still, still photograph. And they have the, it looks like it's daytime. You see the stars. This is great still photography. It's a man, a, a psychiatrist who's on our team, and he lives in Montreal. He had a really wonderful camera set up. Look how crystal clear these are. So they're not, and by the way, we scan, I, had a, I have a, almost a fourth generation night scope binocular, military grade, you have to fill out the Homeland Security paperwork to get them. And there were no aircraft anywhere in this area and no ships. But still, they say it was either dropped from an aircraft or came up from a ship, even though there were no aircraft there and there were no ships there. But the beautiful phot photography by this gentleman. This was at a... Uh, park on the ocean near up where we had uh, engaged a house, an oceanfront house to meet in for the week last year. Was it last year or year before? Anyway, in the last two years. Now you can see it with a less high quality camera. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a, a very inexpensive digital camera. Same event. Uh, and also not on a tripod, obviously. Yeah. Still, 
Now, I'd like to, in all these cameras, there's no smoke trail, there's no parachute, they're, they're not blowing down wind, and there are no other ships or aircraft around. And this went on for quite some time, and the experience in, the cir in, the, in our circle and on the beach, and what happened later that night, uh, when people went back in the dream time after the, the session, people had extraordinary contact events with these interstellars, the ETs. So we can fast forward to the next. Yeah, you can go past these. It's the same, same event. You get the picture. Oh, here we are. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, there's some, this has just happened in um, September. I haven't seen these yet. September 5th, a few months ago. Look at how gorgeous. Oh, and we had a, it's a calibrating camera. And again, no flash bulb, but there is this blue orb and this gorgeous light. And it's where we had, people had seen this object flash in and out. I think there's this one is, is this the triangle that flies over? As a transparent UFO, these two objects are, see everything is stationary? These two are flying synchronously together. See it? Right here. Here it is, these two. And no satellites in the area, in that area. They're very close. You can see how bright they are. There's a lake here, and they get brighter. A little bit of jerky camera work, but they're doing the best they can. Uh, on September 11th, 9-11, interestingly. Look at the date. Oh, there's another event. This is the golden ship that went from east to west. This is a, another event, and it was truly golden. Beautiful color. It's almost like it's living, too, and spinning. Look at it carefully. You can see three, see the sections of it? It's like it's, it's not just, it has like three components. Coming soon? What the? <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Anyway, I guess he's wanting to be a, a filmmaker. Here we are. This is where we're going to be in May, up in Oracle in Arizona. And in the edge of the field, this multicolored, gorgeous, there's nothing there, emerges and uh, comes very close to us. And here's another one. This is at night, but it's just a, the, it's all, it's made, and look at all the light within it. No, well, no. This was uh, in Australia, and it was an infrared, specially adapted camera. And we start having all these amazing <coughs> objects occur. Also not artifacts, by the way. I am not sure. Oh, look at this. This is the one. This is the c steady Triangle. Look at it. Look at it go. In and out of the clouds. Oh, I was hoping he'd crop it and zoom in on it. Then we need a good film guy. Michael, paging Michael. Oh, this is another uh, fly-in by kindness. It's blue-white, if you were to see it with the naked eye. One of the wonderful things about the, uh, if you get one of the apps for your phone or your iPad or just print off a satellite chart, it'll, it, it, if you're out late enough, it depends on the time of year, there's a time where there are no satellites visible. And so 
when, they, when these events happen after there are no satellites, it rules them out. If it's during the time when there could be satellites, you've got to check the satellite charts. So we can go to the next one. where this is. No, oh, this may be Portugal. It's not label, labeled, I don't believe. Is it plain? Yeah. Well, there must be something there. Let's see. Yeah, the counter. Oh. Uh, there's an object here that came and went. I don't know if you noticed from one frame to another. It's still moving. It's still there. It's still there. So let's go to the next. I think this is must must be frozen. It's going up. It's quite large, this, this ship. Here, see it? Here it goes. This is not a satellite and not an aircraft. Um, I'm surprised he didn't put on here. Okay, that's great. Thank you. We have lights up. Did you enjoy those? Huh? Yeah? Okay, well, that gives you some idea. <laughs> One of the things that happened in, in Portugal, we had the puja set up in the, in the center, and the very last night, we did the puja, and one of these uh, objects appeared over the puja table, and the, you know, the orange that I put on the tray dematerialized from one frame to another and moved back to where it was before I offered it, before the puja, witnessed by everybody. It, it left the spot and went. I'm surprised he didn't include that. And then when we took a picture of the group behind us were these beautiful light beings, like columns of light beings all around us that was in one shot, no flash bulb. Beautiful. Apparently.